So this is just a little nugget from Robert McKee's story, and this is just so good. It outlines the difference between a novice and a professional screenwriter. What the novice mistakes for craft is simply his unconscious absorption of story elements from every novel, film, or play he's ever encountered. As he writes, he matches his work by trial and error against a model built up from the accumulated reading and watching. The unschooled writer calls this instinct, but it's merely habit and it's rigid and limiting. Hey everybody, Alan Northern here giving you filmmaking tips and tricks and today I'm going to inform you of the best books on screenwriting for beginners. And truthfully, whether you're a newbie or a veteran, you'll get some value from at least one of these books that I mentioned here in this list. So I got about four books that'll start you off really strong on your screenwriting journey. So if you're excited to learn, then please smash that like button. It's my only form of payment. That's the only thing I ask of you. I give you information, giving me the like it, please. It helps with the YouTube algorithm so other people can see the content as well. Now, let's get started. I would be a fool for not mentioning this as the intro novice book that you should grab first. Uh, and the book is Save the Cat by the late Blake Snyder. So if you were taking a beginning screenwriting course or a screenwriting class, this is most likely the book that they'd give you. And this is most likely the book that they're drawing from. Because even if you hate the Blake Snyder beat sheet, it's just good information to know if you're a screenwriter. Even if you never want to use it a day in your life because you despise the I guess, quote unquote, formulaic nature of it all. Uh, it's just good information to know. A few things I love about this book, I love how it's written. This book has just so much energy and charisma about it. You can tell that Blake loves what he's talking about because when you read it, his excitement kind of jumps out at you and just leaps out of the page. Tons of energy. He's also very, very funny. So if you don't at least smirk while you're reading this book, uh, you most likely don't have a soul. There's another book you might see on a list of um, screenwriting books, and that's S.Y.D. Fields, The Screenwriter's Workbook. I'm not recommending this book, and I'll tell you why. This book is void of energy. It's void of emotion. It is void of excitement. I cannot, in good faith, recommend S.Y.D. Field. I know he's, you know, a big deal in the screenwriting community, but I can't. I cannot recommend this book because if you, you just see, notice the difference in the writing. We've all had this experience. It's Saturday night, you and your friends have decided to see a movie. One of you is picked to read the choices from the newspaper while the others listen to decide. And if you are an aspiring spec screenwriter, you're about to learn a very important lesson. If you have ever been the one elected to read the film choices for a group of gathered friends, congratulations. You have now had the experience of pitching a movie, just like the pros. Energy. Life, okay? Now, let's read the beginning of S.Y.D. Fields. The blank page. A short time ago, I was having dinner with a group of friends and as is so often the case, the subject turned to movies. We talked about films we had seen, films we had liked, films we didn't like and what we disliked or liked about them, which covered a broad spectrum ranging from the acting performances to the editing and photography to the music, special effects, and so... It's wordy, it's like, it needs to be... You know? Um, anyway, energy, charisma, brevity, Blake Snyder has that. So a few things you'll learn about this book, Save the Cat. You'll learn about the creation of your logline and how to do it from the very beginning. You'll learn about the 10 basic movie types that are being made today so that you don't reinvent the wheel. You'll also learn about the basic Blake Snyder beat sheet, which teaches the foundation of structure. And all throughout this book, you'll learn little nuggets of information that'll help your story flow from one scene to the next very smoothly, as well as information of what ought to occur in each and every scene you're writing. And towards the end, he offers advice on fixing your story. So very good stuff. Highly recommend this as a first option to get you started. This is always the first book I recommend because it's very easy to read. It's very fast paced, very quick, very attention grabbing. The second book that I mentioned is most certainly worth the read. The only reason it's not number one on this list is because it's not as easy to comprehend. It may, might take you a read or two to actually comprehend what's going on. 
The second book that I'd recommend is Robert McKee's Story, Substance, Structure, Style, and the Principles of Screenwriting. This book right here, though, this book right here, this book is the book that most likely you will be given to if you went to film school. And like I said, even though I believe that this book is easy to read, it's very dense. There are layers to everything this man is saying. Ogres are like onions. <laughs> They stink? Yes. No. Oh, they make you cry? No. Oh, you leave them out in the sun, they get all brown, start sprouting little white hairs. No. Layers. Onions have layers. So I always say that this book is very similar to something like a sacred text. I'm not kidding. I consider this like a, the Bible of screenwriting or the Quran of screenwriting, whichever religion you are into, because there's depth in every single sentence that Robert McKee is saying. And I believe that he's trying to get you to think like a screenwriter here, right? Because as you read this and you see all the substance, you see how it's written and how each and every sentence has depth and has a few layers in it. I think he's emulating how he wants you to write as a screenwriter. So because we know that scripts, they should be as brief as possible and that the sentences that you use, yes, it should be using everyday, straightforward language, but at the same time, there should be depth within the text that you're writing to give you that subtext that isn't directly seen on the surface level of the page. So yeah, I think he's emulating how your script ought to be written with depth and substance. Very fitting title. I bought this book in film school and I still refer back to this book to this day. This book defines a true beat, a true scene, a sequence, an act, and also the entire film. It defines what a controlling idea is in detail. There's just no way you could read this book and implement the principles that he has in this to your screenplay and for your story and screenplay to not have depth. It's just not possible. This book teaches you how to find your climax, just tons of great things. Robert McKee's story. Also, I have links to all of these books in the description below, so don't forget to check it out. Also, if you are a filmmaker, I highly recommend this little tool right here. It is a Clover Key, a camera plate screwdriver for your filmmaking needs. It's also a bottle opener. So uh, if you're a filmmaker, I highly recommend this tool. I digress. Okay, next book. Now the third book that I'd recommend to you is Michael Haig's Writing Screenplays That Sell. This is another beautifully written book. It has a tons of information in this book. Basically not only focuses on how to create a story, how to come up with your story idea, and how to come up with your story concept, but it also focuses on what are the most marketable things to put inside of your screenplay to make it appeal to audiences all across the country and also make it appeal to your readers who are reading it. So yeah, unlike many other books out there, this book focuses on what makes your screenwriting marketable, what makes your screenplay marketable, and what elements of a script make audiences connect to your screenplay. Now this is super important if you're actually trying to sell your screenplay, which is in my opinion the only thing that matters, because he cites a lot of uh, Nicole Fellowship winners, which is, Nicole's is one of the biggest screenwriting competitions in, in, in the world. There are individuals who have won that competition who just cannot get their script made, who cannot get their film made, and he argues because it's lacking marketability. Even though it's damn good, it's not marketable. So yeah, this gives your screenplay all the elements necessary in order to make it marketable. So this book walks you through how to create a marketable story concept by giving you the story concept checklist. Your story must have a hero, must have empathy, must have desire, conflict, risk, high concept, and a goal or more specifically a commercial goal, all of which I talk about in this video here, what makes a great screenplay. He also goes in deep depth about character development, and he has a solid character development chart that I outline in this video right here. He also talks about in length how to create empathy for your characters, which is paramount when it comes to making audiences connect to your story. Obviously talks about structure and the depth that your story requires and so much more. So after you've read those three books, you've done a good job, okay? You've done a good job, you should be fine. The next book that I mentioned is kind of like the icing on the cake. So this is called Dialogue, The Art of Verbal Action for the Page, Stage, and Screen by Robert McKee. Now this book is about more than just dialogue, okay? This is about the whole damn screenplay. It's named Dialogue, but you're gonna learn a lot more than just dialogue by just reading this book. For instance, true character, as the term implies, names a character's profound psychological or moral being, a truth that can only be revealed when life backs the character into a pressure-filled corner and forces him to make choices and take actions. Everything that he writes has depth. 
The principle of choice is the foundation of all storytelling fiction and nonfiction. To wit, a character's true self can only be expressed through risk-filled choices of action in the pursuit of desire. It's like you can't help but like latch on to the stuff that he's saying because it's like you kind of get what he's saying but then you might have to read it again for it to fully download in there. So Robert McKee talks more about what your script should be filled with, the fact that it should be filled with action, less talking. He goes over the show me, don't tell me axiom that we hear about all the time, like show, don't tell, don't, you know, don't, don't tell me something, show me something. He talks about dialogue's purpose and the three functions of dialogue. He talks about the major dialogue issues and screenplays. He talks about how to make your exposition invisible. He goes over various forms of dialogue and dialogue techniques. So like I said before, even if dialogue isn't a weak point for you, even if you think that dialogue, you got it strong, this book has infinitely more than just dialogue. So you'll definitely still find value in this book. Hey guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please take a look at my film, The Brotherhood. It's on Amazon Prime right now. You can take a look at it and see what I'm made of. Also, if you like the video, like it. And please note that any affiliate links that you use below, I'll be giving a small little snippet at no additional cost to you. If you're a filmmaker, grab a clover key and please subscribe if you found some value in this content. It's always a pleasure talking to you guys. Until next time. See ya.